Советский Союз осуществил запуск первого искусственного спутника с Земли. How many satellites do you think humanity has put into orbit since time began? Since the launch of the first satellite on October 4th, 1957, over 9,000 more have been launched into space, but only about 2,000 of them are currently functioning. The rest burned up in the atmosphere or broke down and became space debris in orbit. But Elon Musk is soon going to launch 12,000 satellites into Earth's orbit, 260 kilograms each. And this is just the beginning. Then he's going to expand the network to 42,000, a beautiful number. But you understand, in total, it is a hell of a lot more than has been launched in the history of mankind. And most importantly, he has already started doing it. Why? Well, at the bare minimum, because the internet via satellite is expensive, slow, and difficult, therefore, he decided to create his own internet with blackjack and, as expected, cover the entire planet with communication accessible to almost everyone and which is in some ways even better than underground fiber optics. Hello everyone. Today, we will find out if this is even possible. Let's talk in detail about the Starlink project and explain what SpaceX has to do with it. Let's go. Elon Musk announced Starlink in January of 2015. But why are we only talking about this now? Because something happened and you'll understand and hear about this story. But first, a little bit about the project and its history. To say the project is ambitious is an understatement. After all, Elon promised in his speech that the new satellite network will be able to cover almost the entire territory of our blue ball and provide the bandwidth of the entire world's internet traffic, thereby revolutionizing the industry. However, with some clarification that in densely populated places, for example, in large cities, there will be up to 10% of all traffic, which is still very impressive. But before moving on to the idea and concept of Starlink, let's find out what problems the satellite internet has today. For example, one of the main ones is the delay. It's huge, 500 milliseconds, too much to play Counter-Strike. And in general, it lags far behind today's internet requirements. But to understand how it arises, it is necessary to understand a little orbital mechanics. You know that satellites fly at certain distances from the Earth, that is, in orbits. There are many orbits. They are different. They serve different purposes. For example, the orbits of the International Space Station are about 400 kilometers. The orbit of GPS satellites is about 20,000 kilometers. In this case, such an orbit is chosen so that each satellite covers a certain and large area on the planet. After all, the farther we are from the Earth, the larger the area you can see. With internet satellites and with most telecommunication satellites, everything is more or less the same only they fly even further from the Earth in the so-called geostationary orbit at an altitude of about 35,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface. There are advantages to such an orbit. You can launch only a few powerful satellites and they will cover the entire surface of the planet. But there are also disadvantages, of course, the most important of which is just the same delay and relatively low data transfer speed. After all, the signal needs to go back and forth and the distance is not small, 70,000 kilometers. This is why there is such a big delay. I'll let you in on a secret. We used to work together with a satellite operator and just met there. And I remember that unfortunate delay. And the most expensive resource was the bandwidth of the satellite because there are so few of them. What do they offer to solve these problems? Look, instead of sending several satellites into geostationary orbit, they decided to put many satellites into low Earth orbit at an altitude of about 500 kilometers, which will be constantly in communication with each other and with Earth. And moreover, they will not hang at one point, but will be constantly in motion. And how many satellites will it take to create such a living web around the Earth? We have already answered this question at the beginning. To begin with, 12,000 units, and then all 42,000 and so on. The first test satellites of SpaceX were launched in 2018. They will not take part in the future network, but they serve to test the communication system. Then, in May 2019, also in test mode, the 60 first pre-production satellites of the 0.9 version were launched. They did not know how to communicate with each other yet, but they were already special antennas for communication with Earth. And since November 2019, SpaceX has already begun the launching of serial satellites of the main grouping of the 1.0 version. And since November 2019, SpaceX has already begun the launching of serial satellites of the main grouping of the 1.0 version. As of May 2022, SpaceX had already surpassed the 2,500 satellite mark. These are already usable satellites and, at the moment, there are 1,504 of them active in orbit and 221 out of service. And 
each subsequent launch replenishes the grouping by about 60 satellites at a time. That's about half of SpaceX's planned first-generation network of 4,408 Starlink satellites. And each subsequent launch adds about 60 satellites at a time to the network. But how is this so, you ask? If I took six months to launch only 500 satellites, the remaining thousands is going to take several more decades. In fact, the plans for the launch of SpaceX are grandiose. First, they plan to launch 60 satellites every two weeks by September. Secondly, this number is clearly not the final one. Since one of the goals of SpaceX is to enable launches of the same launch vehicle with breaks between launches of less than a day. You remember that SpaceX learned to put their boosters on the ground and reuse them. This means that there will be more launches soon. Much more. Well, the main trump card is their new Super Heavy Starship rocket, the development of which is underway. According to calculations, it will be able to enter up to 400 Starlink satellites at a time. But how will it work? Let's just say it's already working. The fact is that in order to start the system in full mode, you do not need to launch these tens of thousands of satellites. And so, in October 2021, the system was out of beta test and now it's already fully operational. And here is the first tweet Elon Musk sent through the Starlink system. It was on October 22nd, 2019. In addition, there are already many speed measurements, but more on them later. In general, moving on, for the full completion of the first phase, about 4,000 satellites will be required, which will already cover our entire Earth. We have figured out the concept. Now we need to turn to the satellites themselves. The company itself does not give details about them, but here is information from the data that SpaceX submitted to the U.S. Federal Central Communications Commission. Each satellite is equipped with a laser system and four phased antennas. In addition, the satellites have an ion engine based on Krypton, which is needed to change the orbit of the satellite, as well as to naturally burn them in the Earth's atmosphere when their service life comes to an end. The laser is needed so that satellites can exchange information with each other and, as it were, transmit it as a baton. However, nothing is known about the laser data transmission system itself except that the satellites will be able to communicate with five neighbors at the same time. Imagine that it will be like optical fiber, but without the fiber itself, because in space there's actually no need. Antennas are also necessary for communication with user stations on the ground. They should provide more bandwidth and be able to work with many users at the same time. It is known that they will work in the K-alpha and K-U bands. And what is a user station on Earth? Personally, I imagine, or rather, I remember a rather large, weighty antenna, which you can still configure to get it to the right satellite. So, according to Musk himself, this is an antenna no bigger than a pizza box, and to connect it, you will only need to plug it into an outlet and point it in the sky. That is, so that you understand, the process of setting up the antennas today is not so simple and takes quite a bit of time. I still remember it from personal experience. I didn't think anything would change, but yeah, terminals are small and are adjusting automatically. They even released a second version of the dish. Now it is a square shape. We realized that it would be significantly lower, but how much lower? Are you ready? After the implementation of the first phase, the delay in communication with the satellite would be about three and a half milliseconds. Three milliseconds by satellite, just imagine, from anywhere in the world. Okay, we understand that this is much better than satellite internet today, but think bigger. Starlink will be faster than fiber optic internet. But who do you think needs such low delays? Well, for gamers, nothing can beat that. For brokers, you know, some have the risk of getting a hat shot from a fifth grader, while others have tens of millions of dollars drained into the pipe because of a freaking ping. And, and here's a working example for you. Imagine that you're sitting in London and you urgently need to sell shares on the New York Stock Exchange. Of course, the situation is very real every day for everyone. The main thing is that the financial markets of the world are ready to pay a lot of money for such a reduction in the delay. If in the past, for the sake of acceleration, a new fiber optic cable was laid from the UK to the US at a cost of $300 million for just five milliseconds, I mean, well, you understand. And this is only from London to New York. There's also Singapore, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and there the delay reduction will be even more significant. At the same time, the main system is reliable. If one satellite fails, then the information simply goes through another chain. That is, not only will the system allow you to work more reliably and faster, but it will also be accessible from anywhere in the world, no matter where. In the center of the Pacific Ocean or in the center of a big city. And now finally, let's talk about the data and speed which I promised. The measurements appeared in August of this year. 
These are the user tests. Even with such a small part of the number of satellites in question, the speed already allows you to upload videos to Instagram or watch videos on YouTube, Droider for example. I keep forgetting to remind you about the subscription, but you probably remember, like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment and share with friends so that we can make more cool content. I hope you like it. We're all talking about tests, and there was already the first use of Starlink in the field. SpaceX provided firefighters from Washington with two ground terminals of the system, The Verge writes. They were useful for extinguishing forest fires, where there is clearly a lack of decent internet. Also, in the future, the system will be useful in other natural disasters, for example earthquakes, when ground communication is damaged. But, of course, these technologies are not without criticism. For example, the astronomical community expresses fears that such a number of satellites would interfere with the operation of telescopes. And indeed, in the year 2019, after the launch of the first batch of satellites, 19 of them, for five minutes, interfered with the work of the DETCAM telescope, which is designed to search for traces of dark energy. As a result, the company's engineers took a step back, came up with the idea that satellites should be covered with a special dark coating that would make them invisible to telescopes. Another question that worries many, but again, there is no exact answer to it, is what will the environmental effect be of the signal itself that is, mountains, clouds, trees, precipitation. In theory, the more satellites the network itself has, the less this will cause interference. So here is the pricing. One-time equipment fee is $599, and the subscription fee is $110 per month. Also, there are separate plans for RV and for business. The subscription fee will be $99 a month. The speed is still promised from 50 to 150 megabits with a delay of 20 to 40 milliseconds. But in a year, it will decrease to 16 to 19 milliseconds. Well, it's clear that with an increase in the number of subscribers and possible future competition with other companies, this cost will obviously decrease. And other companies already exist. For example, one of them is called OneWeb. And you probably understand that people who are afraid of chipping and burn 5G towers We'll go crazy from this project altogether. But we're not like that. So let's look a little bit into the future. Just imagine, the internet is everywhere. At sea, on ships, in the sky, airplanes, anywhere. Fast, stable, high quality connections. For example, if you insert antennas in the roof of cars, all this makes us even closer to the full implementation of the internet of things. And if you dream a little and reduce the dish to the size of an antenna in a smartphone, you will say, this is impossible. In fact, there are already examples. Look at this image here. This is how the GPS receiver looked at one time. And now it's in everyone's smartphone and smartwatch. In general, welcome friends, this is the space age. But this isn't the only interesting project that Elon Musk has. You've probably also heard about Neuralink, so here's a little challenge for you. If this video gets lots of likes, we will publish a separate analysis of the real chipping that awaits us. And for this help in creating this story, I would like to thank Gleb Dinkievich separately. This is the fourth video that we've done together. If you also want to participate, write to us an email at idea at droider.ru. See you in the future.